Hi, I'm Aimon. Welcome back to my videos. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on these Fisher Technic building components so that I can help a few students at my school, the Engineering and Science University of Magnet School, get started with them. Because I used these parts when I was in 7th grade with my teacher, Mr. Lee. And I consider 7th grade to be my best year of engineering because working with these parts was extremely fun and fulfilling. And although Mr. Lee isn't at eSIMS right now, I still want other 7th graders to have the same experience I had when I was in eSIMS in 7th grade. So, let's get right to it. The first thing that we're going to do is install the Fisher Technic software. So, go to the Fisher Technic website. And what you want to do is go to Service, go to Downloads, and then click Robotics Downloads. So right here we have two options for the software that we want to use, RoboPro or RoboPro Lite. Uh, I believe RoboPro Lite can only use Bluetooth interfaces, so we're going to be using regular RoboPro. What you want to do is you want to download the most recent version. Even though this is update, this is still a download. Uh, you don't need to have RoboPro already installed, and you don't need to have a license to use it. So press update RoboPro 4.70, save the file, and this will take 6 minutes. In the meantime, let's take a look at our Fisher Technic Robo interface, which will essentially function as our brain. As you can see, it has many pinholes that each connect to electrical wires that connect to the Fisher Technic components, the electrical components, to turn them off and on, or take a signal from them if they're an input. It also has these two ports on the back. One of them is for a USB connection through USB-B and regular USB, as well as the AC input, which I believe is 12 volts. So let's plug this in. All right, so first we'll connect USB-B then we'll attach the power. As soon as we connect it, you can see that it turns on, it starts glowing, and my computer says it's setting up the Fisher Technic Robo interface. All right, so now we can return to our computer. My download is finished, so we're going to open it. You may go through some security checks, so just launch it. You must be able to edit administrative permissions, so make sure that you're an administrator or you have a computer that you're able to um, work with. So we're going, to go, we're going to go through the setup wizard. Let it install. We're going to let it make uh, changes to my device. That's why you need administrative permissions. Uh, for some reason, you can't see that window just that just popped up, which is unfortunate. And as you can see, the terminal is installed. So we're going to finish it. You'll see in the meantime that it's going to be preparing to install some drivers which you are also going to have to give permission for. And you want to press always trust software from them and then install. Install it. Uh, install the... Then you want to install this device software. Now, you can choose not to install them. I, I don't know what happens if you don't. Um, I haven't used the software without installing the drivers. If you don't give them permission and the program still ends up working fine for you, please let me know in the comments down below so you can help out other people who might be concerned about it. We're going to enable 
so for our purposes, we're going to toggle the language to US or English, which will allow you to see all these in English instead of in German. So what we want to do is open up RoboPro, but when we press this, you're going to see that it says start it via Windows Start. So we're going to press OK, close it, open up Windows Start, locate RoboPro, not Fisher Technic Robotics Terminal, but RoboPro, and it instantly opens up to this screen. This is a nostalgic screen for me because I spent so long on this in seventh grade, and this is just a wonderful thing for me to see. We will go over all these elements in another video, but the first thing I want to test it. But before we go, we want to test the connection between our interface and our computer. So first click com slash USB to set your uh, interface port options. And this will allow you to select whether you've connected your interface to com or through USB. In our case, we've connected it through USB. So we're going to press this one. And the model of interface that we have is actually a robo interface. I don't have a robo TXT controller or a robo TX controller. Although I think we do have some in the back room, so I might go check that out. But today we're going to be using the robo interface. Press OK. And then press test. This window right here allows you to manage your interface, it allows you to control outputs, allows you to read inputs, and allows you to see if the connection is actually running, which is the most important part right now. The first thing that we're going to do is connect a motor to our interface and see if it actually outputs correctly. So first we're going to do is we're going to take a motor uh, this motor might be broken, so make sure that you test it with multiple motors just to make sure it's the motor that's the problem, not the interface. But take a motor, connect some two wires to it, and then you want to find the motor ports on your interface. Place two wires connecting them. It doesn't matter which one right now, but the order might matter when you're actually building it. And on the window, the interface test window, you want to press clockwise. Toggle the speed. Press clockwise. Okay, and stop. So the motor works fine. You can test the other motor ports if you want. Now we're going to test a input. You might want, also want to test the analog inputs, but that will come in a later video. So you want to find the ports that say I on them. There are eight of them, or eight pairs of them. And then you want to connect a push button. You can see this diagram shows you how the, um, what type of switch you want to use is. If you put one of the wires here, and then put it, put the second wire in this hole, when you press the button, it will show you when the button's pressed. If you put the wire in the other hole, it'll show you when the button is not pressed. Or it'll say check when the button is not pressed. So now we know that the inputs work. If possible, you should test all the input ports to make sure that they work. And we'll leave the analog inputs for later. Okay. All right, so that's all for now for this video on the Fisher Technic parts. Uh, first thing that we did was just get our robot interface up and ready. And we also installed the software on the computer. Go check out my next video for...
All right, see you in the next video. Peace.